Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Thursday, which means it's time for a new FLS 12, FLS 12, FL Studio 12 basic tutorial. Today's gonna be about the mixer. We've talked about the channel rack, and we've talked about the piano roll, so we're familiar now with how to put notes on things and to make sounds come out of stuff. But now we want to talk about how to add effects to things and how to arrange and mix your track using the mixer. So, at its face, the mixer looks pretty much just like a reskin of the FL11 mixer, but there has been an addition of an incredible amount of functionality. It's actually super, super, super cool. So, let's talk about that. Uh, first, we'll talk about how to actually add stuff to channels, to inserts in the mixer. Channels, by the way, are these things, and inserts are these things. So, I'm probably going to confuse the two of every once in a while, but that's what I mean when I say those things. So, uh, by default, with this uh, basic preset with all these sounds already here, um, they are actually already uh, linked to channels in the mixer, as you can see by the fact that when I click on them, you can see which mixer insert is actually being selected. And you can change that by going into the channel settings, which is up here. If you don't see this, it's because... Um, Actually, I guess you can always see this because it's a sample channel and it's always ever going to be open. But for things like uh, a synth of some kind, like, say, Harmer, you can actually close or open the channel settings window like so. And up there is where the track is listed. And this will get you put on whatever mixer insert you want to have. Wee, wee, wee. So right now it's on mixer track one, insert one, that kind of thing. Clicking that will actually put it in a the, the first empty track and then also name it. This is actually also a functionality that you can do with Control L. Um, there's other things that we can do with Control L. There's also Control Shift L, where if you select all the mixer, like the channel selects like this, select the mixer insert, Control Shift L, it'll put them all into the mixer insert in order, automatically name them what the channels are called, and then also color them if they happen to be colored. Like, see, this one has now the Harmer color. And there you go. And now, if I were to... They're all in their mixer, individual mixer channel, and it's all super cool. So, you, you, in each mixer insert, you have pretty regular functionality when it comes to being for mixers. You have uh, arming and disarming. This isn't for recording, this is just on and off in terms of being able to hear it. If you right-click it, it'll solo it. If you right-click it again, it'll unsolo it. When you solo it, it'll actually keep on every mixer insert that it's routed into, just so that the chain is complete. Uh, by default, the last four mixer inserts are actually set up to be um, sends like the old school FL sends. However, there are no actual sends anymore. Uh, this is because fairly early on in uh, FL's version history, like FL4 even, um, you could you could route any mixer insert into any other mixer insert, so sends were really kind of superfluous. However, this is a legacy feature that people still have projects that use these things, so they still have this as, as an optional setup just to just to adhere to those particular projects. However, I prefer that they not be there. Um, anyway, but they're just that's just what that that's just what that it is. But also, uh, it's signified by this interestingness is the fact that they, whenever I scroll around in the middle here, when I'm moving around inside the, the channels, these guys stay there. You might be thinking, well, yeah, so the sends in the original, but remember, they don't have sends, so what's up with that? And that's because we have these docks now. We have left and right dock, and we also have the middle dock. By default, the ones that are not the master or the uh, current channel, also known as the selected channel, if you're wondering where that went, that's what that is, um, they're on the, the right, the left side dock, and then the sends are on the right side dock. But you can add anything you want to either of these docks. Wrong button. Right click it, go to dock two, left, middle, right. And so there, it's always going to be there. This is, for me, particularly super helpful when I'm doing things with buses. Buses being when I have more than one channel linked to another channel. And I like to say, I have all the drums right to this channel, and I have this channel right over here, and it's just stuck on the side so I can always see the bus no matter what. It's super helpful for, you know, organizing your mixes. Now, one of the biggest updates to the, the mixer beyond stuff like this is actually the fact that it's scalable. Ha, ha, ha. You can even full screen it if you want, which is just the best. Along with this visual upgrade, we also have a various other changes we can make to things. This button up here adds a, a different, uh, a separate row of particular um, functionality. It used to be just over here. This is um, this is the reverse polarity. This is the swap left and right, and then this is the uh, mid side fading uh, stereo spreading fader. There's also 
way more than just the two settings because it used to just be this thin mode and then there was a wide mode. But now we have we have compact, compact two, wide, wide two, wide three, and then extra large. I actually kind of like extra large because like um, like more traditional does, it keeps the it actually has the effects listed inside like this here. And this button over here gets rid of the left side effects wheel. And honestly, you can you can get away with not using that because you can put an effect in here. With that in mind, let's actually talk about how to add effects in this stuff. To this mind, to this end, I'm actually gonna make it a little more reasonable to look at. So let's say we have armor. We have armor here. It's a insert 14. We. It's on the it's at the dock. I'm gonna dock it back to the middle just because it's weird. Um, let's say I want reverb. So I'm gonna go over here. We have our mixer effects slots over here. I'm gonna click on it, and then uh, it gives us this uh, select menu over here with different options. And then let's go find one that's something that we want. The way that the effects are arranged in here are the same way that the plugins are arranged in the add menus, which I haven't talked about yet, but I did actually already make a video for. And eventually I'll, I'll get back to that and give more um, effective information. Let's find let's find a reverb though. It's probably in delay reverb. Okay, so f free re reverb too. But da And now we have reverb. We can also add EQs. Now, this might seem obvious to some, but I'm still going to say it. The order of the effects does matter. It's a single chain, which is to say that right now we have a reverb going into an equalizer. But it, we could switch it around and say that we have now have an equalizer going into a reverb, which does change how the sound behaves. This is true for just about everything, every kind of effect you could possibly think of that we have that we can put inside FL. Um, also note that when I when I have it, uh, when I'm actually clicking on it and I have the effect open inside something that I can I can I can actually mess with the effect name is darkened to let you know that the one that you're using is in fact the one that's open and that's actually very helpful for a lot of reasons moving it around I am doing it by scrolling with the scroll wheel if you don't have a scroll wheel you can go down here and you can say just move up and move down just like that and that's particularly fine we also have uh, various other options inside what you can do with the individual effect plugin some of them are a bit uh, much like the, the like link all parameters is, is some, something we'll talk about eventually. And then we also have uh, add plugins to the database, which is how you add new th or, or third party plugins into the plugin database, which is what that giant list is here. And not only that, but you can also add different versions of the same plugin that gives you different presets. So you can have particular presets where they say you have a reverb to use a lot. Instead of going into the preset menu to find it, you can actually go and save a whole a whole instance of it as being a specific preset that you can load up whenever you want to, if you know you're going to use it a lot. So that's what that's for. But that's not what I want to talk about. We're going to talk, talk about more about the mixer stuff. So in addition to that kind of neat business, we can now also select multiple multiple mixer inserts, and we can move them around as such. Yeah. Super good. I'm doing it wrong. That's okay though. Anyway, you can select multiple multiple mixer inserts and you can use this to route all of them to a particular insert. So now this entire, all of this is just routed in there. Um, you can, there's also a various select options. If you go down to the drop down menu, we can see, for example, select select all the tracks routed to this one, tracks, uh, this one is routed to, tracks routed to this one, the group, that kind of thing. There's also the grouping function you might have, might have noticed. The grouping function, really what that does is that it creates separators. So if I had all if I had all of these selected, I put pretty sure it's all of them. Yeah, we and come in here and say create group. I missed the button. <laughs> I hit separator. That's not what I wanted to do. But I want to hit create group. I can name it something. Let's say um, since and it renames all of them to since and it creates separators. Separators, as you saw, you can actually create anytime you want, anywhere, and these separators stay there for, you know, they're just there. They're not docs, they are just separators for visually visually enabling you to, you know, organize what's going on in your mixer. It's very cool stuff. You can also right-click on it, and you have various options inside the actual mixer enter itself. You can rename it, and you can color it, some, some things, you can save it, um, you can save it, and also, whenever you see this icon next to something inside FL, this means you can click on it and drag it. And what that means is that if you have something going on in here, like you've got some plugins that you want, and then you want that to be applied onto something else, what you can do is you can click on the save thing, click on it, drag it, and drop it onto another one, and it'll clone it and load it onto that particular mixer insert. So that's what that's for. 
auto color group, create group, docs, and you have the doc options, and then allow better processing, which is a bit of an advanced idea for how this works. We'll talk about that at a later date. So now you might notice that some of these have actually yellow icons engaged. And what that is, is the automatic uh, plug-in delay compensation, which you can engage up in here. I typically don't have it on automatic, and I just I, I like leaving it alone most of the time. But um, this the yellow yellow clock here, it means that it's enabled. You can see how much it's enabled over here, and you can tell if it's pre or post. And you can also you know reset it or set or set from you know from some other things. And the whole point of the, of the plug and delay compensation is that it's there to ensure that when you when two things, for example, are supposed to hit at the same time, but because they had different kinds of effects on them, there's latency involved, which means that one of them might actually hit later than the other one. And you don't usually want that. And so the delay compensation means it will delay the other guy until it's matched up with with the one that's delayed already, so that it all hits at the same time. For the most part, though, I don't like to mess with that. I like to handle it manually, so I usually just reset or don't have automatic on. It's on by default, usually when you start a project, so if you want to not have that on, then you'll want to save a version of, of a template that you can load that does not have that on as an option. So that's what that is. That's all that's, all that that's about. Uh, in Over here in this drop, there's also the input and output for um, anything. It's also a built-in equalizer that is really very just super simple in terms of uh, what it's designed to do and how it operates. Um, this is I use this mainly for really fast edits on things. I don't I don't try to uh, I don't try to like do anything too complicated with it. This is mostly here so like if you know like you want to get rid of highs really fast, you don't want to open up a plugin equalizer like uh, equalizer plugin, then you can just do that with this and it's fine. That has the benefit of what we're talking about latency, the fact that every single mixer insert has this on it, which means that if you move, if you use it, it's not adding additional latency to anything because they all have the same thing. Uh, the input and the output is for uh, if you have um, your audio interface has microphone inputs. I currently have two PreSonus Fire Studio projects linked in there, so you can see the, the two sets of eight that are the top one and the bottom one that I have in my rack, and also the group of stereo inputs, and then also the outputs for the ten for each of them, the, the sets of ten of stereo outputs that they have engaged. So you can route input and outputs inside each of the uh, individual inserts. And of course, by default, the master is actually set to put out to the main output of your main audio interface, which you can set up and you can choose inside your audio settings that you're using. That's what that is for. Anything more important here? Not so much. So, yeah. Let's go over the icons that we have listed here. So, in here we have the level, the level selection. You can see the level of the item. We can also set a different kind of, of interface. Where we see we're seeing the waveform come down instead of leveling. Which is kinda neat. Oh yeah, about the, the faders. If you have multiple things selected, you can actually move all the faders at once. And, and they also the cool part is that they actually move relative. And by relative, I mean if you have already a fader selection set up and then you want to move them, you can move them and they'll keep their relative position which is really nice. Just in case I didn't talk about that because I didn't. Indeed. So you can set that, that's what that button does up here. This is the solo option, this is the panning. Fader. The reverse polarity for um, reversing polarity. Uh, swapping left and right. The mid side. And this little button tells you that you have effects enabled. And if you click on it, it'll actually disable the effects you have in there. There's the PDC. And this is the ARM disk recording button. And then down here is where we route stuff. So let's say I want to route this channel to something else. I click on the thing that I want to reroute to, and it'll route it. And here's the send volume for how loud it gets routed into that channel. By default, it's routed to the master. Everything is routed to the master, and everything is routed to the four sends just by default. There are some more options though. If you right click on it, you have a couple of default um, configurations for macros for routing for things. We can route to this track, which is what we we're just doing. Route this track only, where it unroutes it from everything else and routes it to only that track. Sidechain in this track, where it routes it and then turns the volume off because in the NFL you can sidechain using the uh, the uh, limiter plugin, and then um, it doesn't require actual level to be input into the mixer. It just requires that 
it's linked to this way, and then it has the volume information, and then it uses that to do side chaining, and that's why we're side chaining the input means that you're actually turning the volume off. Inside chaining the track only is the same thing as route this track only, where it unroutes it from everything, and then it side chains this. These are all, of course, things you can do manually. Like, you can unroute it from the master, unroute it from the four sends, and then route it to the um, this guy by itself. It's just that those help you just do it faster, you know, some workflow. So, disk recording. Let's talk about that. This is a bit of a thing, kind of an advanced idea, but let's sort of look at that anyway. Disk recording is essentially FL's version of freezing. What, the, what what this is is if I have a if I make a like a line, I have this going on. Let's put this in the master only. And then I want to record it. I have to arm it. We go. And then we go back here. It says render the wave files. And we have a whole bunch of options. Auto unarm, meaning that when it's done, it'll unarm the channel. Auto create audio clip, where it'll put an audio clip below where it's supposed to be. Latency compensation, where it'll, co it'll calculate latency compensation. But if you don't want that, then you know you want to disable that. So that's why I did so just then. And then the 32-bit float recording, where if you have this on, it'll save it as a 32-bit float wave file which is quite a bit larger and also quite a bit different than the other, the regular 24-bit or 16-bit WAV files. If you have this off, it'll save it as a 16-bit WAV file. So I'm going to save that as a 16-bit WAV file, and now I'm going to go actually say run the WAV files. Now, I have the song selection, which we can't see because I turned it off, and they have a bunch of options. Have, oh, wait, we can actually save it. That's, that's cool. There you go. So just, you have just options set up in there. You have different quality, different resampling ideas, which all this stuff we'll talk about at some point. It'll be an uh, explanation about all that kind of stuff. Cut remainder, cut remainder or wrap remainder. If you're doing a loop, this is actually very important. So cut remainder means that it'll only record what's there. I have reverb on this, for example. So this means that um, it'll just cut immediately off and there'll be, there'll be no extra reverb after the sound, even though there totally is. Leave remainder where it'll actually leave the, re the reverb tail in there and wrap remainder where it'll put the reverb tail in the beginning of the sample. So that if you're looping the sample, it actually still sounds like it's playing. it's still playing itself. I'm gonna do leave remainder. You have song selection or pattern. We're doing song selection because I have a selection inside the thing. I'm gonna hit start. And it did it. And you can see the very tiny, tiny bit of the remainder there. So that's what um, that's what this, this, this recording is, and that's how you freeze things in FL. Just in case anyone ever told you you couldn't, you totally can. It's not something I do very often. The whole point, the idea of freezing, there's two really two ideas of freezing. One is you want to do audio-based editing to it, like maybe pitching it up and down or cutting it or uh, time stretching or any of that kind of funky stuff. You want to do that, that kind of thing. Or if you're trying to save CPU power because you're no longer processing a synth live, you're playing a recording of it, which is always easier on your computer than it is to try and actually just process it all the time. I have a particularly ridiculous computer, so I haven't had to care about that. So, But if you have to care about it, that's something that's good to know about. Uh, what else is important? So, this guy, the current channel. So the per the purpose of the current channel is that um, it doesn't actually route sound or put sound out anywhere. Whatever what it does do is that it applies its per its effects to whatever you have selected. This is particularly valuable if you're using something like uh, Wave Candy. Wave Candy is a analysis plugin that shows us things like. Um, shows us things like particular waveform. So if I have, notice that when I'm selecting the clap and I'm playing the thing, it doesn't actually do anything. But if I select Harmer, it shows me the waveform of Harmer. So that means that I can, I can look at and analyze at whatever I want at any particular moment. So I don't have to make 50 wave candies. I can only make one and I can just look at it and then I know I can know what I'm doing. Same deal as if I have um, an Edison in here, which I use for recording. I can click on something, like I can actually tell it to say, re record on input, click on armor, and then now it recorded the armor, and now I have the recording of armor. So, and once again, just like the wave candy, this saves me from having to have 60 uh, Edison's per just section of armor or any any of the other inserts. I can just have the one, and I can record what I want to record and save space. So. That's the purpose of the current track, which formerly was known as the selected track. What else is important? So in, in the other options out here, we have some 
particular things. Open audio editor and open audio logger is actually just going to open a version of Edison inside the master channel that is set up to do those particular those particular uh, processes. You have the file open mix the same same thing mixture track state same mixture track state browse states just saving it and doing it. Detached mode means that it will actually go off screen into another monitor if you want to do that. To do that. You have the various views, viewing options, compact plugin list, track inspector on left side, waveforms, whether or not, you know, that kind of thing. You have parameters, idea that we talked about before, the PDC, this recording, uh, renaming and coloring, channel routing, the selecting, solo, alt solo, separator, create group. These are all things that we have covered, so that's very good. Uh, what else is important about the mixer? I, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but I've definitely covered enough of the basic functionality that you should be able to be on your way to using it to do what you want to do in your own songs. And I'm sure you also, on your own, discover plenty of cool things that you can do with it yourself. Honestly, half of the cool things about this I don't even use just because I'm used to not having them. I'm used to not having the separators. I'm used to not having, you know, being able to select all the things at once. Like, I'm still, I still now, like, am selecting individual things, routing it routing it, routing it, routing it, because that's what you had to do before. Now I can select all of it, and then I can route them all at once, and then they're all there, and they're all good. It's so much better than what it was before. So, I am particularly pleased with uh, how the mixer is now. I also am very enamored with being able to resize it to whatever the hell I want. And it's actually it actually makes having multiple monitors really, really helpful because I could just full size this on another monitor and have it go, and it's pretty great. I just can't do that when I'm video rec recording a video because then you won't be able to see it. So that's a important thing. This button here enables both multi-touch control. If you, this is if you have a um, a, a multi-touch monitor, and that just moves parameters and buttons and widths and where around, so that it's 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 a uh, optimized for using for touching and stuff like that. I don't have any of that, so I have no idea what it's like. But there is actually videos on the ImageLine channel of them using it like that, and it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's kind of a cool thing that they have uh, uh, come up with that kind of stuff. Yeah. So this is good. This works out. Anyways, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Oh, wait. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions about this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.